Some years ago, I made a wager and I promised to report. Incidentally, when I offered to make the wager, somebody could pick out five hedge funds and I would take the unmanaged S&P index used by Vanguard Fund. And I would bet that over a 10-year period that the unmanaged index would beat these five funds that were all being managed, presumably. They could pick any five funds that were managed by people who were charging incredible sums to people because of their supposed expertise. And if you put in longbets.org, it's a terribly interesting website. You can have a lot of fun with it because people take the opposite side of various propositions that have a long tail to them and make bets as to the outcome. And then they both give their, each side gives their reasons. And you can go to that website and you can find bets about you know, whether what population will be doing 15 years from now or all kinds of things. And our bet became quite famous on there. They And a fellow I like, uh, who I didn't know before this, Ted Sidus, bet that he could pick out five hedge funds. These were funds of funds. In other words, there was a, one hedge fund at the top, and then that manager picked out who he thought were the best managers underneath and then bought into these other funds in turn. So that the five funds of funds represent maybe... 100 or 200 hedge funds underneath. Now, bear in mind, the fellow making the bet was picking out funds where the manager on top was getting paid perhaps a half a percent a year plus a cut of the profits for merely picking out who he thought were the best managers underneath, who in turn were getting paid maybe one and a half or two percent plus a cut of the funds on profits. But Certainly the guy at the top was incentivized to try and pick out great funds. And at the next level, those people were presumably incentivized too. So the result is after eight years and several hundred hedge fund managers being involved is that now the totally unmanaged fund by Vanguard with very, very, very minimal costs is now 40 some points ahead of the group of hedge funds. Now that may sound like a terrible result for the hedge funds, but it's not a terrible result for the hedge fund managers. (laughs) These managers, A, you've got this top level manager that's charging probably a half a percent. I don't know that for sure. And down below, you've got managers that are probably charging one and a half to two percent. So if you have a couple percentage points sliced off every year, that is a lot of money. We have two managers at Berkshire that each manage nine billion dollars for us. They both ran hedge funds before. If they had a two and 20 arrangement with Berkshire, which is not uncommon, in the hedge fund world, they would be getting $180 million each, you know, merely for breathing annually. That it's a compensation scheme that is unbelievable to me. And that's one reason I made this bet. But what I'd like you to do is for a moment, imagine that in this room, we have the entire, you people own all of America. All the stocks in America are owned by this group. You are the uh, the Berkshire 18,000 or whatever it is that have somehow managed to accumulate all the wealth in the country. And let's assume we just divide it down the middle. And on this side, we put half the people, half of all the investment capital in the world. And that capital is what a certain presidential candidate might call low energy. In fact, they have no energy at all. They buy half of everything that exists in the investment world. 50%, everyone on this side. And so now half of it is owned by these no energy people. They don't look at stock prices. They don't turn on business channels. They don't read the Wall Street Journal. They don't do anything. They are a slovenly group that just sits for year after year after year owning half of the country, half of America's business. Now, what's their result going to be? Their result is going to be exactly average as how American business does because they own half of all of it. They have no no expenses, no nothing. Now, what's going to happen with the other half? The other half are what we call the hyperactives. And the hyperactives, their gross result is also going to be a half, right? They can't, the whole uh, uh, has to be the sum of the parts here. And this group, by definition, can't change from its half of the ultimate investment results. This half is going to have the same gross results. They're going to have the same results as the low energy, no energy period people. And they're also going to have terrific expenses because they're all going to be moving around, hiring hedge funds, hiring consultants, paying lots of commissions and everything. And that half as a group has to do worse than this half. The people who don't do anything have to do better than the people 
that are trying to do better. I mean, it's that simple. And I hoped through making this bet to actually create a little example of that. But that offer was open to anybody. And I would make incidentally the same offer now, except you know, being around in 10 years to collect gets a little more problematic as we go through life. It seems so elementary, but I will guarantee you that no endowment fund, no public pension fund, no extremely rich person wants to sit in that part of the auditorium. They just can't believe that because they have billions of dollars to invest, that they can't go out and hire somebody who will do better than average. I, I hear from them all the time. So this group over here, supposedly sophisticated people, generally richer people, uh, hire consultants, and no consultant in the world is going to tell you just buy an S&P index fund and sit for the next 50 years. You don't get to be a consultant that way. And you certainly don't get an annual fee that way. So the consultant's got every motivation in the world to tell you this year, I think we should concentrate more on international stocks or this year, this manager's particularly good on the short side. And so they come in and they talk for hours and you pay them a large fee. And they always suggest something other than just sitting on your rear end and participating in American business without cost. And then those consultants, after they get their fees, they in turn recommend to you other people who charge fees, which as you can see over a period of time, cumulatively eat up capital like crazy. It just demonstrates so dramatically. I've talked to huge pension funds and I've taken them through the math. And when I leave, they go out and hire a bunch of consultants and pay them a lot of money. And I, it, it's just unbelievable. And the consultants, always change the recommendations a little bit from year to year. They can't change them 100% because then it didn't look like they knew what they were doing the year before. So they tweak them from year to year and they come in and they have lots of charts and PowerPoint presentations and they recommend people who in turn are gonna ch charge them a lot of money. And they say, well, you can only get the best talent by paying two and 20 or something of the sort. And the flow of money from the hyperactive to what I call the helpers is dramatic. Well, this group over here sits here and absolutely gets the record of American industry. So I hope you'll realize that for the population as a whole, American business has done wonderfully. And the net result of hiring professional management, you know, is a huge minus. And at the bookstore, we have a little book called Where Are the Customer's Yachts? Written by Fred Schwett. I read it when I was about 10 years old. It hadn't been updated, but new editions have been put out a few times. But the basic lessons are there. That lesson is told in that book from 1940. It's so obvious. And yet all the commercial push is behind telling you that you've got to think about doing something today that's different than you did yesterday. You don't have to do that. You just have to sit back and let American industry do its job for you. There's been far, far, far more money made by people in Wall Street through salesmanship abilities than through investment abilities. There are a few people out there that are going to have an outstanding investment record, but there are very few of them. And the people you pay to have identify them don't know how to identify them.